Welcome to Colossal Pictures DVD commentary for our short film Far Too Many. One question we had to consider when making our film was how our product used, developed and challenged forms and conventions of real media products. Throughout this DVD commentary we will answer this question. Our film starts with a simple shot in which the main focus is just our main character. As our film is only five minutes long, we need to introduce, introduce the protagonist quickly so that the audience has enough time to make a connection. Here we are also introduced to one of the main plot points to the film, the OCD of the protagonist. When researching short films, we noticed that many were based on everyday life with a problem or twist. Also, when researching our chosen genre of romantic drama, we noticed this was, a, this was again a common plot line, and so it was an obvious choice for us to want to stick to this convention in our short film. The film then moves to a house. As we wanted our film to resemble everyday life, we chose simple, recognisable settings so that we could create a sense of realism and the audience would be able to relate. Most romantic dramas are set in relatable, common settings so that the audience can relate to the feeling created. We wanted to stick to this convention, and so chose to film ours predominantly in an office and house. During this scene, we also see the equilibrium of the story. As proposed in Todorov's theory of equilibrium, a film is made from five stages. Equilibrium, disruption, recognition, repair and resolve. This scene therefore shows the norm in the characters' lives, as we see Rob displaying his OCD and Kate and Rob's life together. This narrative structure is not always used in a short film, as the build-up is often too slow, but we decided to go against this convention, as we felt Todorov's narrative theory would work better for our story and is commonly used in romantic dramas. In this scene, we see the couple in the bedroom settling down. Here, we have close shots of what is significant in the scene, for example, the light turning on and off and the reaction of Kate. We use soundtracks and sound effects in our short film in the same way they are conventionally used in feature length and short films. In this scene, the music continues from the prior scene, a simple, happy sounding track used throughout most scenes in our film. The music choice was kept simple so not to distract from what was on screen. We also kept key ambient sounds such as the repeated kisses or the light turning on and off. Romantic dramas use high key lighting, which symbolises romance, and so is used in happier scenes, but then low key lighting to create a feeling of tension and drama. During this scene, we are introduced to the second part of Todorov's theory of equilibrium, where we see the disruption in the relationship. This unbalance is reflected in the lighting in the beginning, as the light flicks from high, high key to low key. We used a series of junk cuts throughout the film when showing his repetition of everyday tasks. Although this is not usually seen in romantic dramas, and more likely in action or thriller films, we felt the jump cuts emphasised the repetition in an effective and entertaining way, and decided to use it even though it went against convention. In this scene, we again see the jump cuts being used, this time to reflect the fran franticness of Kate, whilst Rob seems unaware completing his normal tasks. This is where we see the two per personalities begin to differ. In short films, only one or two main characters are usually used. This is because short films don't have the time to go into detail about lots of different characters, so the character numbers are kept low so the audience is given enough time to relate to each of them. We wanted to stick to this convention, and so we decided to use just the two main characters, as we agreed that having too many would be hard to explain in such a short time frame. We decided to make these sympathetic characters, meaning the audience could feel a connection with them and strongly identify with them, creating an emotional bond through relatability. These two characters are of the age we feel we are most appealing to with our film. In many romantic drama films, the main characters are a heterosexual couple, and so we decided to stay with this. Often the characters are of a young adult age to appeal to the target audience of a romantic drama. This scene is shot in an office, again a realistic setting to allow the audience to relate. The office scene is one that is typical to a romantic drama film. In many short films there is a lack of dialogue. 
Often a narrative voiceover is used to tell the story instead. In our film, we stuck to this convention and predominantly used the voiceover of Kate as we felt it would be more interesting to tell the story of someone living alongside the OCD sufferer. However, we also added interjections from Rob as this helped explain his side and showed the turmoil within the relationship. We thought using a narrative voiceover effectively communicated our storyline. However, we sometimes included bursts of dialogue to help tell the story. In this scene, we hear dialogue from Kate's boss to help tell the story further. We felt this was effective and added to our storyline. That wasn't good enough. We then return home for the next scene, but the low-key lighting that introduces the scene reflects the mood. We also sense the mood change through the change in music. The track is more dramatic and apparent, and this adds a sense of tension. This tension is the build-up to the recognition, as proposed by Todorov. Like the last scene, we again have the voiceover with interjection of dialogue. This is to reflect the fiery nature of the argument. We broke the convention of shots used to show conversation, as usually a shot reverse shot is used. We instead used longer shots and did not go from speaker to speaker, as there was constant overlaps and so there was no clear speaker at one time. This break with convention makes the audience feel slightly uneasy, as it is not what they are used to from a usual conversation, but reflects the nature of the argument. Also in this scene is the superimposition of clocks. When researching films, we notice that some had reoccurring motifs throughout the film, so as well as the repetition of five, we repeated the use of time references and shots of clocks. In this scene, we film from mostly one angle. This is so the audience almost seem like a bystander watching the action. The music continues from the last scene to show that the tension is still apparent. Although the genre of drama equally appeals to both genders, due to the fact it is also a romance film, most romantic drama films are more appealing to females or effeminate males. Whilst our film may attract this as a primary audience, by adding a more serious element, such as the theme, of, the theme of OCD, we feel that males and females could both be equally interested by our film. We are then reminded of one of the beginning scenes, Rob alone in the lounge tidying again. This shows a circular narrative in the story. The scene uses parallel action, a method which is used often in romantic drama. We decided to use this as we felt it made this last scene more interesting. In the outside scenes, a tripod and dolly are used to reflect the certainty, certainty that Kate displays in her character. In contrast, a handheld is used when Rob is chasing Kate to show his urgency. The ending scene is the repair and resolve stage of Todorov's theory, and is typical to a romantic drama film. Whilst the lighting in this last scene should stay fairly high key, due to the fact we were filming outside in the evening, we could not control this, and so some of our shots were darker than we wanted. <laughs>